Good evening, everyone. My name's Heath Haskins, Code Primate, and this is going to be some JavaScript. Um, before I get started, I do want to give a huge shout out to um, somebody. I just found them. Hold on. Right click, uh, explore in folder. Um, Ak Akash Gandhi over on YouTube Creator Studio. If you look for piano ambient calm amazing like pianos in the background that's what you're hearing right now that is the artist of all the songs that you're gonna hear and uh, it's just gonna be playing in the background so huge shout out to them because absolutely amazing I, I am going to turn it down just a little bit because I feel like I'm trying to shout over it anyhow they are free to use and uh, no attribution needed you can use them on your YouTube channel you can use on uh, your videos, stuff like that. As long as you're part of the YouTube um, creators stuff. <coughs> okay, <coughs> so JavaScript. I had a lot of people asking me like, how are you going to pick a winner it, by the comments, blah, 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 and like, I didn't know. Um, I had a script a while ago that I created um, that basically went, would go through, it would grab all the comments, and then it would choose a comment at random. So what I'm gonna have to do is, I'm gonna scroll down through all the comments. I have not evaluated these yet. And no, it's not an April Fool's joke. You will be able to get the book. Um, by the way, somebody, okay, I see a couple of people who have done multitudes of book, 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 book. I promise you, my script will only pick you one time, okay? And I'll walk you through it. Um, it is actually a very, very intelligent script. Uh, in fact, right here. So this is how I got started. First, I needed to find out all the comments inside. Um, oh, there we go, all the comments. So var all comments equals, oh, don't wanna add a tag there, equals document.getElementsByTag and this little thing. Thank you, YouTube, for designing your own tag for comments. What, code, how, how is this so? So check this out, um, if you're inside Chrome, just press F12 and you can pull up your uh, your developer console inside the elements, inside all of this stuff. So as you're going through here, like let's go up to the first comment on the channel and I'll just show you how this works. So like uh, right here, right click, inspect element. It takes me right to his name, okay? Now if you look, this is what I used to have to go off of, which was div. Um, each one of these was a, a divider or it's div, div, divide, divide. I don't remember what div is. What is div short for? Anyhow, it's a div. Uh, and what I would do is I would do find um, or get element by class names, and it would return an array of um, these things, um, the divs, but by class. So like that was that was the hard thing to do. Now, as I was looking through the code today, I looked and realized that. These right here, oh, not that one, this one right here. All of these, these are their own little tags. They're called yt or ytd-comment-thread-renderer. And if I, if I scroll down just a little bit, like here's the top four comments, right? As I move over each one, it'll highlight them. That tells me that that's the container for all of that code. So the only thing I have to do is do uh, document.getElementsByTagName use this tag name because it doesn't appear anywhere else except on a comment. Thank you so much for the subscribe. Oh, I don't have notifiers on. Hold on, who was it? Uh, Woodsman the Barbarian. Thank you for subscribing. Anyhow, um, so that's what I can use. And if I just click in here, copy this, I'll show you what the first one does. Var all comments equals document dot get elements by tag name, and then just type in that tag name like that. Undefined. So if I just type out all comments, uh, lowercase one, sorry, my, my script is still in there from the other one. It says it's an HTML collection of 168 elements on that, that scene. So there they are. So if I just do all comments and then I use bracket one, two, three, four, five, 54, whatever, it'll return me that one element of the screen. So this one right here, 
uh, number one. Okay, this is where you have to count from zero. So zero is the first, one, two, three. So if I do uh, the one, it'll give me the second element right there. And we can actually expand that down, 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 blah, 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 like that. And it'll show me each one of the parts inside. So that'll give you an idea of how I got all the comments at one time. I pulled them all into a variable. Now we're good. Now to get, let's say, um, let's say we wanted to get John Wick the name. Okay. So what I would have to do is um, traverse, traverse down through here and just see which one of these is going to give me the divider that contains his name. As I move over each element, I can start to break down. Okay, so this is the ID header. Inside here is the badge that doesn't do anything. Inside here is the author. And inside the author, that's the author text, which by the way, is not the name itself. That actually, that's a link to his channel. So I have to open that up. Right here is the span. Okay, so the span contains the name. So uh, in JavaScript terms, this element, um, hold on, I gotta, do, 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 do. if I were to do this, number one, and then I'm gonna start using what's called children. So each one of these, as you can see, oh gosh, what happened? Oh, right here. So each one of these, as you can see, this has only got two children in it. That means this element contains um, a YT comment renderer, ID is comment, and a div, which ID is replies. So it's gonna be the first child node, or zero. So this one's zero, this one's one. All right, this one's zero, this one's one. So what I can do is I can start doing this, dot children, and then zero. And that actually points, hey look, see? If I did one, it'll, oh wait, uh, two is undefined, one is div hashtag replies, that's more of a style. I want the actual there, comment, zero dot children. And then I knew this one is the second comment renderer dot children. Okay, so let's go look real quick. This is zero. One, one, zero. So zero, one, one, zero. So child zero, child one. Uh, is it child or children? Children. Child one. And then children zero. Uh oh. I can't spell children. There we go. So that, that gets us down to uh, the header, uh, div header style. I don't know if you can see that. It's, it's really tiny down there, but just to give you an idea of like how I got the elements. Header, uh, comment header, author. Header author right there. And then it's going to be child zero, child zero, and then the inner text. So we're gonna go dot children, children zero, children uh, dot children zero dot inner text. Uh, maybe that was the wrong one. Two is a no go. There we go. So I was one element off. So this should return John Wick. It's the inner HTML of all comments one. John Wick. Perfect. And I can actually do equals Blah, blah. and it actually changes it up here. So 
<laughs> Not that we wanted to change it, but an example of how to use the console to change elements on the screen, which it's a lot easier just to right click, inspect element, double click and change. Anyhow, long story short, let's go back over to the code. So the first thing that I do is I get all the comments and then right here you can see where I was looking at username and the comment itself. So uh, that's just a bad example because I was using one, but I did the same thing. I did the path find all the way down until I found the inner text, which got me the username. And then I did the same thing, the, the path find until I found the inner text of the comment itself. So I know that this object contains the name at a specific child and it contains the comment at a specific child. So I can use the children tree to pull all those back. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Anyhow, the next thing I do is I create a variable called search term and I prompt enter the term that you'd like to search for. Next, I ask how many number, how many winners do you want to have? Prompt how many winners? Now, here's key um, key bug that I found earlier. If you have three entries and you're trying to pick five winners, it's going to crash. So it might behoove you to take this code, run it one time with one winner to see if it'll work. If you have zero winners, I, I don't, if there's zero comments, I don't know what that would do at all. No clue. Anyhow, run it, test it, see how many comments you have first. I know that there's at least 10 hashtag books, so it shouldn't crash. Knock on wood, this is a demo. It could demo fail, who knows. Uh, next is the total comments. <clears throat> All the elements of those comments that I find, I say all elements or all comments dot length and I pull that into a variable so I can use it later. I didn't have to, but I did. Uh, found comments equals a new array. So I'm just gonna create a, basically a table in Lua, only this is a, it's a, it's a table in, well, it's kind of, it, it, no, it's an array. It's an array inside JavaScript. Then I do a for loop, just like we do inside Lua in most languages, and I say var x equals three. Oh, why did I do that? Var x equals zero. And um, there we go. While x is less than all comments dot length x plus plus. Yes, because the length, if, if it's 10 elements, technically it'll only go up to nine. So when X reaches nine, I don't want it to run again. So that's, that's good. <clears throat> so next we go, uh, the comment text equals all comments X. That is this variable added here. So it starts at zero, goes to the max length. And then we do that children, 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 children dot enter text. And we put that into the variable comment text. That way I don't have to like, deal with the children inside these, uh, these, the search down, search down here. So then I say, if the comment is not equal to blank, we don't want a blank comment down there and the comment text dot to lowercase. This is why I was saying earlier about you having uppercases and lowercases, not going to matter because we're, we're going to just push that down to a lowercase anyway. And then dot search. And then we have to give it some kind of thing. So I'd use search term, which we defined up here. Whatever you told me, we put that to lowercase. So whatever you typed in, you could type in capital book, capital O's, capital K's, lowercase case, doesn't matter. It's all pushed to lowercase. If the find is not equal to negative one, as in we, we found something, we don't care where it's at right now. We just know that what we're looking for is inside that comment text somewhere. I'm gonna save that real quick, just in case. Then we, put into our array, we push all comments, this particular object. So we're not pushing the text itself. We don't, we don't care. We were just looking to see if that comment had it Push the whole object into the stack of our found comments, this thing up here. Next, we create names equals a blank array. I probably should put var in front of those, but I didn't. Proper programming says that you should probably put var in front of these, or maybe like whatever the other one is. I think it's array. Who knows? Anyhow, Java is gotten JavaScript has gotten a lot less um, strict over the years, so it's okay. <coughs> oh gosh, we're already 15 minutes into it. Next, uh, don't worry about this. This is old. In fact, I'm I'm gonna get rid of that. That's my old alert text. Um, right here, we do another loop. We want to loop over all 
uh, the found comments. So we say x uh, var x zero, same thing that we did up here, it's just a loop. Uh, x is less than any, you should probably use a different variable than the first loop, just saying. Um, found comments dot length. So it starts at zero and it goes all the way up until the length of the array, which if there's 10 elements, you want it to stop at nine. That's why I don't have an equal sign right here. And then we just loop and loop and loop and loop and loop and loop and continue to loop. So this name equals found comments, children, 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 children dot inner text. This grabs the name, pulls it over. Okay. <coughs> Actually, no, it takes the name out of the object and places it as a singular string. So it's now just a string by itself. It's no longer inside the comment. We have the name of the person that we're checking. Now we check right here. If names.index of this name is not already in there, if it's equal to negative one, we didn't find the name already in the names. We go ahead and take that name and push it to our, our names. So basically I'm, I, I created an array. I'm going through, I pick out a name. I'm looking at the name and I say, Hey, do you contain this name? No. Okay. Add it in, go through somebody's commented twice. So there I grab that name. I look at it. Hey, do you have this name? Yes. Disregard two names will never get inside our variable at the same time. I hope I'm explaining this correctly. <laughs> if not comment down below, <laughs> just kidding. You don't have to comment. Not if you, if you don't want to. Next thing I do is the, this is where the magic happens. New window equals window dot open blank. Okay. Basically I'm using the window to up open function and I'm passing it into a variable. That way, whenever I need to refer to that window that I just created, I can refer to it as new window. So new window dot document, new window dot address URL, whatever the variable is of a new window, I can control it now that I have a variable of it. So last I go var winners equals blank array. I did a var right there, but I didn't do it on the other ones. Crazy var winners equals blank array. Okay. If the number of winners, I tried error checking it right here. If the number of winners is greater than our names that we created up here, um, dot length, then number of winners equals, uh, names dot length. So I tried to make it so, um, oh, I should probably just do minus one, right? No, it's cause it's still, you could still have an array of 10 names. Minus one would be, it'd be fine. Okay. So <clears throat> number of winners, no greater than or equal to that's right. So, um, sorry, confused myself. Cause I had an equal sign in there. I'm like, hey, we didn't use the equal sign up there at the top, but that's because we were looking at the array. The number of winners is a set variable that we typed in manually up there at the top. So we do another loop for var equals x equal to zero, set x equal to zero. And while the x is less than or equal to the number of winners, we're going to loop through this information and then add one to the x. This name equals names math dot floor time. Uh, we want the lowest number math dot random times names dot length minus one. So the names length, is 10 minus one would be nine. So it's going to be a random number in between zero and nine. That number is going to be returned to us as 9.5, Who knows? It's a random number in between the lowest number and the highest number. So by using math dot floor, I say, if it's 9.5, make it a nine. If it's 7.6, make it a seven. I, I take and I round off or I do the lowest number from that. If it's 7.9 closer to eight, it still rounds down to seven. So that's what the floor does. Uh, and then that returns just a singular number that says names number equals this name. And then I check if the winners dot index of this name is not found. Then we go ahead and push that winner into our winners array. Basically here's, here's the winners array. Hey, I got a name here. It was randomly picked. Do I have you in my list? No. 
add you to the list. Here's the cool part. If it does it again, it says, do I have you on my list? It says, no. All right, let's put that one back. Let's go ahead and minus one from X. That's this part right here. Because I need that same amount of winners no matter what. We can't just skip a winner and have like, hey, there's 10, but you only pick three because the repetitiveness. So it will grab another name, check it, and do it for the number of winners. The final result, we say, new window, dot document, write. And basically, I wrote out a secondary page right here. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. But the entire page itself is actually contained within this write statement. So all commenters, text area, uh, this is a text box up at the top. It's 200 across, 10 down. I named it TXT names, text names. Uh, it is a text, text area. And then I, I start in right here, like the search term was this, search term dot to lowercase. The total entries was names dot length. The total comments was total comments. Number of winners right there. And then finally the winners equals the winners array. So, um, and then finally for the last part, I say um, text names equals new window document get element by ID text names. So I'm grabbing that element that we just created in the new new window. And um, text names dot type equals text. So it's no longer a text. It's no longer a text area. It is now actual text just in case there's like some weirdness in there. And then I say uh, the names equal our names that we found all the names. And then we select all the names and we copy it. We actually do a exec command on the document itself. So it will highlight everything, copy it, and give it to you inside the clipboard. That's the cool part about this script. Anyhow, let's uh, let's show you what this does. This is not the picking of the winners, okay? This is just a demonstration to show you that I am going to be picking the names in a specific way on my channel. Uh, let's make sure that we're down to the very end. Control end. Code, how are you? What is, uh, What time is it for you? It's late, I can tell you that. So, oh, we gotta refresh because the second one says blah and it would it would actually pull in blah. <laughs> All right, so let's hit refresh, F5. I don't need to see it, pause. We'll go down to the end. This should load everybody up and I'll check to see that everybody's allowed. If you, if you got caught inside my spam filter, I'll try and get you into the uh, get you into the comments. Hey, by the way, you'll be able to see if your name's on the list right now, because that's what I'm about to run. So, take your entire script, paste it in, enter. What is the search term? Hashtag book, singular by itself. Book hashtag book. How many winners? There's going to be ten. Right there we go. It just selected all these people down here. So um, there are 169 total comments. There were only 84 people who put in the word hashtag book right there. And we picked 10 of them at random. Bacon Queen, Dylan Collins, Hellfire Gaming, uh, Dwarf, Dwarf King, Dwarf, uh, X, J, Craig C, J, D, Hamilton YT, Funny Road, Fortnite, etc. Linda Borg. These weird like symboly symbols. Carolyn Drummond and Sebastian Shore. So, if you guys want to see it again, all I got to do is come back over here. We'll do it again. And I'll show you. I can put in hashtag B O O K 10 winners. Doesn't matter what the search term was. It does it again. And now we have a completely, well, it's not completely different set. Cause I mean, you only have so many names, right? So they're legit. There's 10, I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Uh Oh, one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Uh oh, uh oh, we've got an error in our code. Okay. Equals one to the number of winners. So from one to ten. Okay. Let's try that. Save. Copy. Go back over. And paste. See, and this is why we error check everything. Book. Gonna have ten winners. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Perfect. And if you don't want ten, or if you want to use this code for yourself, you can always go, hold on. Is that the end of it? Oh, it is. Wow. There we go. If you want to use this code for yourself, you absolutely can. Paste. Um, the search term. Let's just search for the word high. And let's pick one winner. Yo bro every day. It looks like there were 17 people who said hi <laughs> out of 169 comments. Uh, let's look for something else. Here we go. Hash text book. Hash tech book. <laughs> Copy. I'm just going to hit up. Enter. Hash text book. One winner. <laughs> of 169 comments, there was only one person that put hash text book. So, uh, Gary Blaine Jr., you might go and fix that. Okay, make sure that make sure that you put in the correct hashtag. Um, if for some reason YouTube changes between now and then, like on Friday, then I will correct the code before I, I run it. But I wanted you guys to know the process that I go through to create these scripts as far as programming goes on JavaScript. Um, there's a lot more. There's so much more you can do. JavaScript is the simplicity behind it. Um, if you start getting into jQuery and if you start getting into JSON, uh, Ajax requests, SQL, making these requests across the internet, um, creating APIs for your website to respond to out external responses, stuff like that. There's a lot more security involved. There's a lot more stuff to do. <sighs> Basically, um, I just, I love to program. I love code. And I mean, that's one of why my name is Code Primate. It's pro Programming Monkey. Um, although there's already a Programming Monkey out there on YouTube, so I, I don't think I can, I can do that one. Anyhow, thank you everyone for watching this episode of JavaScripting. I don't know, coding, programming. It's, it wasn't Roblox Lumber Tech Two, but I mean, I still got that over here somewhere. So we'll still keep playing. Thank you so much for 100,000 subscribers. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. Thank you for enduring my rant about programming code. I hope this has been an enjoyable experience. And if you're having a bad day, I hope it gets better, and I hope this was able to take your mind off of it for just a short period of time. Love you guys very much. Have a great night. We'll talk to you very soon. Outro.